Okay, there we are. All right, I'll check you in 20 minutes. Thanks, man. Uh, <clears throat> I was so delighted with the um, with the square when I saw it in, in Cannes because it's, uh, I'm delighted with any comedy that uh, diverts from the usual strategy of American comedies, which is to always go very low, yeah, very common denominator. Yeah, and I was delighted that not one laugh in your well, maybe the the chimp in her apartment, but everything else was yeah. was not low. And yeah. I thought that was delightful, just as a concept. <laughs> yeah. And I felt that uh, basically that the the sum of it was more in terms of impressions, like a impressionistic painter or something. Mm -hmm. um, one impression, one, and you kind of stitched it all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just wondering, had now you're going to tell me now that no, 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 it's actually a story that I had worked out. But mm -hmm. is that impressionistic thing that I, I mean, it's impressions of obviously Swedish society and political correctness and the insular mm -hmm. lives of people who live in this realm. Yeah. <clears throat> no, you know that what what I have done when I was writing the script was that uh, I started with the thematic first and like how do we look on responsibility on an individual level and on a society level mm -hmm. uh, how do we look on the social contract yeah. uh, do we put trust in people etc uh, uh, etc cetera, et cetera. these things and then I was starting to collect scenes that I thought was connected to this thematic and then, uh, you know, the idea about the square, the symbolic place, the square, mm. was something that me and a friend of mine created in order to try to change the social contract in the public spaces in Sweden. Mm. We, we felt that people uh, looked at themselves that um, uh, they are disconnected from the responsibility of being a fellow human being. And we wanted to like increase trust in society, uh, increase the uh, possibility for us to take responsibility. And then we created this symbolic place. And we were invited to an art museum to make an exhibition. And that's when I, ah, th this film can take place on an art museum. And uh, the, the main character can be uh, the chief curator uh, on this museum. And he can be put up to a moral challenges uh, where at the same time that he believes in this humanistic idea, I wanted to challenge him on a personal level. Mm. And then I was looking for situations where I felt challenged myself. Uh, and, uh, and then I built like the, the film is built around that robbery and go in and going out and trying to find a boy and I can't find him. And then we have a, what's going on in the museum at the same time. So it, 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 it's actually a linear story, but I think I stop up in the, in the moments quite long, so it feels um, episodical then, of course. My two impressions, right away, I'll just go piece by piece, but my two impressions about the note handed off mm -hmm. to all those apartments is that I, if I were to receive a note saying, I know that you stole my yeah. phone and wallet, and if you want to avoid prosecution, give it back. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, okay, well, I never stole anybody's yeah. wallet, so mm -hmm. no problem. Yeah. Throw it in the garbage, end of story. Yeah. And if the uh, parents of that young boy became very upset mm -hmm. at the idea of their son maybe being, uh, I mean, I wouldn't have no problem calling them mm -hmm. right away and mm -hmm. saying, listen, mm -hmm. it was just a general ploy yeah. to get the, the mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. It was uh, not meant at your son or mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. So please accept my apology. It mm -hmm. wasn't meant personally. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he just do that? Mm -hmm. Well, I I had to challenge myself also when it comes to that, when it comes to the script. And I, I had to put in a lot of different kind of pressure on him, mm. as both on a professional level when he's dealing with his work, but also from like, I'm the character and mm. his kids, and he's dealing with, uh, there's so many strings attached to him. Uh, but I think that for me, the reason that he can go out in the end and try to ask for apology or try to do good is because he loses his position. Yeah. So his position in itself also, how do you say, uh, uh, makes him unable to, to take responsibility. So when he loses that, he's also free in some way. So for me, it is that all these strings that are attached to being this like semi-public figure and yeah. I was also challenging myself, I said the people who were directly subordinate to, uh, how do you pronounce his name, but is it Claes? 
Uh, ja, Clay's, Clay's bang. Bang. Yeah. Not bang, but bang. Bang. Mm. Okay. Klaus, in Swedish you say Klaus bang. But, yeah. The people directly supporting it to him at the museum um, surely must have glimpsed the possibility of social pushback. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And yet, because they didn't have it in their, it wasn't their immediate, it was his responsibility, mm. they let it go through. Yeah, mm. sure. That's malicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It struck me that way. Yeah, yeah. Particularly the blonde woman who was his immediate uh, sure. you know, subordinate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's all these layers in this thing. It was fascinating that you just, you know, put it out there. I must say it was, uh, uh, if I compare it to Force Mayor, a Force Mayor was so much easier to write. Because then you have the avalanche situation and mm. everything starts from that point, basically. But when it came to this topic, that is such a wide topic, uh, it was mm. like, how do you write something about when you are trying to discuss these things? So uh, it, it, it took a long time for me. And for me, it sold when the PR agency came into the picture, you know, that they are going to promote this humanistic mm. art piece. And what they do is they do a super cynical video and they succeed. Mm. So media goes straight into the trap and they start writing about it in order to, uh, and that layer for me was like, okay, now I'm highlighting the kind of media landscape that we are dealing with today, you know. So mm, that's actually when I felt, okay, now the film has something. You know? I have a relatively new Russian wife. We got married last June. Okay. Mm. She immediately uh, was alerted to the notion about Terry O'Donnell's yeah. character having yeah. a Russian yeah, yeah, Oleg something. Oh, yeah, oh, he, he is actually inspired of a Russian performance artist uh -huh. that is called Oleg Kulik. And Oleg Kulik, he had a performance in a museum in Sweden that is kind of famous because he was playing a dog. And it had a sign where it says, beware of the dog. Uh -huh. And people that didn't respect this, he actually attacked them. <laughs> and it went so far that he <laughs> bit the sheep curator's daughter in the leg, so they had to call the police. Uh, so they had, to, they had to call the police, actually. When did this uh, performance art happen? It oh. happened maybe, I think it was uh, in the beginning of the 21st century, like in the first decade of the... Uh, in Sweden? Yeah, somewhere? yeah in, a, in a museum called Färgfabriken. I can write it down for you if you want yeah. to. But, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> and he is a quite extraordinary person and he's willing to go far when it comes to his art, you know. You know? I felt that the ending of the of the Terry Notary stand up scene mm -hmm. where everybody jumps on that was one of the funniest things I've Yeah, seen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the uh, the decorum that all patrons mm -hmm. of the arts maintain. Yeah. Even when for instance the chef yells at them mm -hmm. <laughs> is never by they always yeah. they're they always maintain yeah. this you yeah. Know, yeah. respectful, submissive Yeah. We get it. We yeah, get it. Mm -hmm. I think that the, <laughs> the idea with that scene was quite. I enjoy doing that scene a lot, but the idea with that scene was much. You know, first of all, I wanted a tuxedo dressed audience in Cannes, sitting in Lumiere, mm -hmm. looking at another tuxedo dressed audience, trying to deal with this mm -hmm. performance artist that mm -hmm. is breaking the social contract. You know, really completely. But then I also wanted the, the tuxedo dressed audience in watching that uh, the performance in the film. Mm. They are starting like civilized human beings, sitting there and having this etiquette, you know, they exactly, you know which fork you should use and everything like that. And, and then they should end up like uncivilized animals, mm. like beating yeah. the shit out of this the performance artist. Yeah. So. By the way, you know, I love that photo that I saw of you when you won the Palm d'Or. Yeah. You had gotten down and you were, yeah. you know, on, on your knees or yeah. one knee or something, holding it up. Yeah. Know. We were. It's um, a great photo that I'd like to find somewhere. Did you see when I was on the stage, or did you see? It? Because no. I made a whole audience scream. Oh, okay. So I had an idea, you know. So I should I, find the video when you won. Your yeah, screen. exactly. Okay. Because the, the, I wanted, I wanted like, mm. I thought it would be beautiful. I said, okay, let's do the screen, uh, the mm. primal screen of happiness now together. Mm. And I wanted the, the photographers to aim the camera back to the audience mm. uh, because I love that they were like. This mm. tuxedo dressed audience <laughs> screaming yeah. right straight out. Mm. So I made him scream. It was quite beautiful. Mm. Mm. Um, why did you choose? Um, what was about Clay's bang? I, I really like the guy. I think mm. he really. Uh, what was about uh, about him that you know you obviously must have had many opportunities to choose others. What did yeah. you like about him? I mean, I think that uh, 
there was a point where when we were doing the crossing I asked him to write a speech about the square mm. himself mm. and he wrote this part where my father